Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first Facebook Live for our Trinity Bible College and Graduate School. So already it's 2023, and we want to bless you with some giveaways. How about that, right? It's going to be super fun. So this first time is with no other than, none other than Dr. Scott Townsend, who is the assistant dean of graduate school, and he has written this amazing book called Jesus's Table Talk. So guys, for you to um, win a book, uh, this is what you're going to do. You're going to like and follow our page if you're not doing it already and tag your friend who went to school with you. It could be your roommate. It could be your RA or it could be somebody that you had a crush on. Whatever it is, just tag a friend and maybe just jot down a year of your graduation. Even if you participated and attended for a semester, you're still part of Trinity. So why don't you just go ahead and do that? And lastly, while we're still live, I want you to share one fun memory. Maybe this is going to be your confession time. Uh, you know what? Years ago, I did so-and-so. I did this and that. I'm sorry. You can do that too. <laughs> but before we go on, I want to just invite Dr. Scott Townsend to our conversation, who's going to be our very first guest. Let's welcome Dr. Townsend. Hi, Dr. Scott. How are you? Hello there. Doing well. Doing very well. How are you doing? Very good. And so yeah. you're the first guest of our Facebook Live. All right. And I'm setting the standard. Yes, high standard. And somebody, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> yes, you are. Someone lucky is going to win this book. And I just explained it to them how to do that. But uh, you are serving as assistant uh, director, uh, dean okay. of graduate program, but you were an alum. So tell us about that journey as a student. How did you join Trinity? Yeah, oh, that's a, it's kind of a fun story. I enjoy, I, I really, my whole time here at Trinity is, was really exciting, a lot of fun. But I was uh, a youth, I was a youth student back in Illinois, where my dad and stepmother lived, and I was there for a while. Kind of uh, brought my life back to Christ during that time. And my my youth pastor at the time, I had talked to him about wanting to go to a college, and he he had actually gone to North. It was at the time it was uh, North North. It was North Central Bible College in CBC. Mm. Yeah, and uh, he had gone there but he thought he, I would like something a little smaller like Trinity. And from that moment on, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to Trinity. I had other schools call me. I had other, you know, whatever. It's like, nope, I'm heading to Trinity and that's what I'm doing. Uh, got here and just fell in love with everything. In fact, this is where I met my wife. Just the first few weeks of, of school, we, we uh, kind of met each other and, and got to know each other. And, and uh, you know, that whole journey started, but yeah, I love everything about Trinity. I loved and and love. Uh, I was actually a part of a a uh, drama a drama team my first year, and just I mean, just Ooh. everything about it was a lot of fun. Um, my my teachers uh, had a very very well rounded education as a Bible college student. Uh, I had a teacher who was into philosophy and apologetics, one that was into doctrines and languages one that was into pastoral ministry and one that was into theology and that kind of thing. And just really gave us a significantly well-rounded uh, understanding of not just scripture, but history mm -hmm. of scripture and the philosophy mm -hmm. behind all of that and the apologetics, you know, just everything behind it. Wow. And really, I think behind, I think once, once uh, we left here, uh, there was still just this interest, you know, there's something about Trinity we yes. always say, if you leave, it's it may not be long before you come back. And mm -hmm. for me, it was about about five, let's see, was it five, six years? I went to Seattle and youth pastored there for a little while and just felt kind of a burden to come back, wanted to come back and, and work with Trinity in, in any capacity. You know, honestly, yeah. I didn't care. I just wanted to work here. I just loved it mm -hmm. so much. And God opened the door and here I am. Wow, what a journey, right? So you started oh, yeah. as a student on doing undergraduate. What was your major back then? My major was a it was a double major in ministerial and uh, biblical studies. Wow. And uh, I was a youth pastor for several years. Uh, never took any youth classes or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I jumped into the job really well with with even the stuff that I learned here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just loved every moment of it. Right. And it's paying it off. You're still pastoring. Why you I am actually senior working. pastoring a Lutheran church wow. and a um 
a kind of a, a non-denominational community church in, in mm -hmm. a couple small towns, not too far from us. Yeah, it's a lot right. of fun. I absolutely love it. Wow. Well, let's talk about your book a little bit. For those of you that are listening, one of you will be winning Dr. Scott Townsend's book, Jesus's Table Talk. <laughs> and we're going to have a little bit of conversation on that. If you want to win it, make sure you like and follow our page, our group, uh, our page, uh, what is it? A TBC <laughs> grad school. You can also find us on Instagram as well. Same handle, TBC grad school. Tag uh, some of your friends you went to school with, and then make sure you comment what your favorite memory was. So that will be fun. That's how we're going to decide who's going to win this amazing book. So I had an opportunity to read this book. And it's really amazing, inspired by some personal interactions yeah. in your growth and conversation. But it's really talking about table talk with right. different people, just diversity at the table. I'm thinking like parties, but you mentioned starting in chapter one, having a table talk with your family. Right. I think that's really important. Absolutely. You're going now branching out to people that are yeah. not like us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is important because that's Absolutely. the table was in the Bible. And then ending with that last supper, it was still amazing. So yeah. talk to us about that. What is this really book about and who should be reading it? Oh man, everybody should be reading it. It's a, honestly, I, 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 it sounds a little tongue in cheek and I don't mean it for it to sound that way so much, but um, it's a great devotional book, but it's mm -hmm. also a great book that just provides a good understanding of what Christ's uh, context was like in certain uh, elements there, but also how, how those, how that context can influence uh, our context here. I actually started this book, um, after a conversation I had with a global scholar of ours, uh, just talking about the symposia uh, mm -hmm. that uh, in Luke that Luke highlighted uh, throughout his his letter, and symposia are uh, are kind of are for the Jews they were teaching uh, teaching dinners. Mm -hmm. uh, so typically, a Pharisee, a scribe, would invite Jesus or somebody well known like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, to a dinner like that, and they would teach. They would uh, talk about some important concepts or topics of the day. Jesus was invited to several of those mm -hmm. uh, kinds of symposia, and uh, the and and the, just the elements that are brought out from that. In fact, the first one we look at isn't a symposium at all; it's a banquet. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, it's a banquet that was thrown by Levi, who was a tax collector. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about tax collectors in uh, in Bible times, so to speak, in the first century, Bible, uh, tax collectors were Jews, typically, who were hired by the Roman government to uh, to collect taxes from other Jews. Mm -hmm. And if and the Romans gave them freedom, if you want to charge more, go for it. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. And uh, Jews, Jews that that uh, uh, that had the opportunity, so to speak, to have their taxes collected by these tax collectors, hated them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pharisees, in fact, we they refer to them in Luke as the as tax collectors and sinners. They put tax collectors in that category, and uh, in fact, Jews would re reference tax collectors, Jewish tax collectors, as Jews who made themselves like Gentiles. Mm. Uh, so they were hated, a hated group of people. Yeah. And yet Jesus, a rabbi, a teacher, called one of them, Levi, to be a disciple of his. Mm. Any good rabbi worth his salt would never, ever, ever do that. Mm. And yet Jesus did. And so Levi invited him back to his house for a party. Yeah. And uh Jesus went, <laughs> he went and partied with the tax collectors and the sinners. Yeah. And I, you know, the idea behind that is, you know, we don't know what kind of opportunities we have around us. Yeah. You know, we, sometimes we have this, this feeling that we need to separate ourselves from the world when in fact, that's actually quite the opposite of what, what's expected of us. In fact, Paul says, he's yeah. talking to the Corinthians and he's saying, um, there are some some bad people, you know, in, in the church. Mm -hmm. Separate yourselves from them. He says, not the world. Mm -hmm. If I if you were to separate yourselves from the world, you you would no longer be here. Yeah. You need to be in the world. You know, Jesus understood that. He also understood, uh, based on what what he says. He says, uh, you know, I'm here not I'm here as a as kind of like a doctor. It's it, the doctor. It's not the it's not the well that need a doctor like the mm -hmm. Pharisees and the. Yeah. And the, the 
tax collector or the Pharisees and the scribes, it's the sick. Yeah. These people need Jesus. They need grace. They need to know more about God and what God has for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus was doing. And the mm -hmm. Pharisees and scribes just couldn't understand that. And there's so much more it, throughout the book that really provides a good mm -hmm. understanding of what, what, what each of these uh, encounters mean in Jesus context, but also then relating that back to us, what can we learn from that? If we, yes. we look at it just from the, from the context of, of Jesus culture, uh, that's great. That's good. But mm -hmm. if we don't and can't relate it to our own, then we really lose out. And that's what this book does. It really provides good context, good right. cultural context, but also a good challenge for us as Christians. How can we live our lives better for mm -hmm. Christ in our culture where we at right now? That's so true and so uh, timely. Uh, there is a word uh, called sobremesa uh, and really means after people have a meal, they kind of linger. They linger to talk, linger to fellowship, yeah. which is very Jewish, which is very non-Western, that lingering. And even in America, it used to be that kind of a culture where people linger at the dinner table and get to know each other. But now everybody's so busy. Yeah. And so your book really uh, struck a chord with me that I do need to be more intentional about slowing down with the people around me, starting with my own families, right? right. I, I really love that that was your first chapter. Right. And then it's really ending with, okay, now what? Who's around me? You're being more intentional about finding people that are different than you because right. at Jesus' table, everybody looked different and it was right. a good thing. It was a good yes. thing. Absolutely. And I love those questions that you end in each chapter. There's about two to three questions that really pause you to think through that and reflect. So you're right. It's, it's pretty devotional in, in its nature. Right. Uh, so thank you for writing this book. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, so let's, let's just talk about our uh, Trinity grad school. Oh. Some of the exciting things are happening, of course. And this, our, our school is growing so fast and so many wonderful things to do now. It's just like in a few days, uh, next week, Monday, like school starting. So yep, yep. what are some things that students can look forward to? And if there's anybody who may be interested in joining uh, Trinity Bible College for the undergrad or even grad school for us, how can they contact us? Well, they can contact us through our website, uh, trinitybiblecollege.edu. Uh, there you'll find our phone number. You can contact us uh, in, in the, the general offices. And they'll, if you have any questions for either say he or me or any of us, uh, you can let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll respond to your questions or, or concerns. Uh, you can also find our emails there as well. Uh, but yeah, as far as Trinity is concerned, as far as the graduate school is concerned, we're pretty young, mm -hmm. uh, but we have currently five masters and a, a PhD, all led by Dr. Paul and Dr. Carol Alexander. Uh, when they came in, Trinity was in a pretty difficult place, but with their leadership and their direction, uh, it brought us to a tremendous place of growth, of health. Uh, we have never in our history as a college, not just since I've been here, in our history as a college, been this healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing phenomenally. And uh, yeah, as far as our master's are concerned, we have a master's in mission, uh, master's mission leadership, uh, rural ministry, global theology. It's a great master's. Take a look at that online, see what that has to offer. Uh, a master's in, in rural religions. And of course, a master's in chaplaincy. Yeah. If you're interested in ministry, just in general, chaplaincy mm -hmm. is a fantastic opportunity for you. And there, we have some amazing professors teaching in the chaplaincy program. And Dr. Sehi actually is directing that program. And she has a, she, she was a chaplain, still has that chaplain heart. And, and uh, she is a phenomenal director for that program. But uh, yeah. And then of course our PhD in, in, in uh, practical theology. Yeah. And just, if you have any questions about any of those, we are here to help you with that. And very much look forward to starting a conversation with you. We're here to help you with that. 
here mm-hmm. to get you started, but we're also here to walk with you through the entire process. Right. We we believe very strongly in journeying with our students, not just not just at the beginning, but through the process to the the conclusion of their programs. Right, and that is the heart of the Alexanders, uh, the online community. Right, it's hard right. to find yourself as a part of the community when you're doing the graduate work uh, at this level where you're not really seeing people on a weekly basis, but our graduate school is very intentional about creating that platform. World Religions is another one of the five master's program that we're gearing up for. Super excited. I think one of the highlights of what we do offer is actually an alternative pathway. If you are listening and you've been in ministry more than five years, um, but you don't have a bachelor's degree, but you could probably teach one of those classes because of the experiences and knowledge you've gained over the years, but you have a tug in your heart, like, I know I'm supposed to get a higher degree, but I don't have a bachelor's degree. Hey, he does up because there may be an opportunity for you to continue to educate and jump right into the master's degree yes. without the bachelor's degree. So why not just consider that and pray about it? And that's huge. That is so huge. So I want you to take advantage of that. Well, Dr. Scott, I thank you so much one more time for your incredible book, Jesus's Table Talk. And one uh, a viewer, a lucky winner, is going to be uh, getting this in the mail. And so we'll contact you. So once again, how we are going to select a winner is if you like and fo- follow our page um and then you tag a friend that you know who was an alumni with you roommate whoever is your friend who was part of trinity uh graduate and even didn't go to graduate school but undergrad that's totally fine too you went to to trinity together that's fine and then comment one memory it could be funny it could be sad it could be whatever it's just one memory that's so dear to your heart you still remember share with us and we're going to read through them and choose one of you and then we'll be happy to mail this book to you yes well thank you so much for our conversation today thank you for joining us and don't forget to tune in again next week friday at 6 p.m central time we're gonna have a conversation with our next guest who is a mendy bellman and she just uh, took on a new role at trinity bible college as a registrar so she's a very important person so <laughs> stay in touch and we will be back next week god bless you everybody thank you dr scott yes thank you